Hey, fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is a Practical Math channel, and this is a chapter in a Foundations of Math book. This is Chapter 8, uh, Introduction to Algebra, where we're going to learn the difference between a variable and a constant. Also, order of operations, how to simplify expressions, how to evaluate expressions, and how to solve equations. This is part of a bigger course called Foundations in Math. Um, the link to all of the other chapters are in the description, as well as a, it's actually turning into a book, a Review of Math. And, and it's all about the Foundations of Math course to hone all of your math skills so you could progress in math. This whole course is set up so you can be successful in any standardized math test, whether it's the ASVAB to get into the military, whether it's a union math placement exam to get an apprenticeship. Any standardized math test is pretty much the same. I know a lot of you have had math, but it's been a while. So this is reviewing all of those skills so that you can perform well on any standardized math test. So let's go ahead and get started with chapter eight. If you have any questions on other math ideas, um, again, go to the description. The previous chapters might answer those questions, and I'm going to keep progressing. The tests in here are sample exams from different union entry exams or the ASVAB. Okay, this chapter is all about the introduction of a variable, and a variable is something that could change. Let's say you wanted to graph the price of gasoline over time. Um, well, the price of gasoline today is going to be different than it is tomorrow or yesterday, so you're not going to just have a number which would be a constant. You're actually going to represent the price of gasoline with a letter. Usually that letter is X, and that X means the price of gasoline. So today it could be six bucks, tomorrow it could be seven bucks, a year ago it could be three dollars. So the idea that that number is changing is a variable and usually represented with a letter so you could plug any number in. So right here, this is an expression. An expression means there is no equal sign. So you can't really solve anything unless you're given a value for x at a certain time, like of gasoline. So if this is 5x plus 4, there's really nothing to do unless you know a value of x. So here it's saying if x is equal to 2, what is this expression equal to? An equation means it does have an equal sign, and that means I can isolate the variable x and get it by itself. So let's do this expression first. So I have 5x plus 4. Let's say x is equal to 2. I'm just going to set up a table here. I take that 2 and I plug it right in there. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 4 is 14. So my expression, sometimes called y, or we could just call it 5x plus 4, is equal to 14. Now let's pick a different value of x. Let's say now x is equal to 3. I take that 3, I plug it in the same spot. 3 times 5, 15, plus 4, 19. Let's say it has a, a different value. You know, prices are going up. Now x is equal to 4. I take that 4, plug it in there. 20 plus 4 is 24. Or now it has a value of 5. 5 times 5, 25. 25 plus 4, 29. And then finally a 6. 6 times 5, 30, 34. So you can see right here, again, it's an expression because there's no equal sign. I can't really do much with it unless I have values of x. I take that value of x and plug it in. If I have multiple values of x, I could set up a table and say when x is equal to 4, my outcome is 24. And that's really the power and the use of algebra. Okay, from expressions, let's move on to an equation. So right here, it says solve the equation. 3x plus 4 equals 13. It's an equation because there's an equal sign. I have no value for x. I want to know what x is equal to in the equation. The way I do that is I have to isolate that value x to get it by itself. So I have to do reverse order of operations. I'm trying to get this thing by itself. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Right? I can do whatever I want to the equation as long as I do it to both sides of the equation. It's like a scale and it has to stay balanced. So I have 3x plus 4 minus 4. Those things will disappear to give me 3x by itself. Then on this side, I have 13 minus 4, 9. And then still need to get x by itself. So then my next step is division. This thing is being multiplied. The reverse operation of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. If I divide the left by 3, I divide the right by 3. Again, I could do whatever operation I want as long as I do it to both sides of the scale. 3x divided by 3 
gives me x by itself, and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I have solved that equation for x. x is equal to 3. The check for that is take that answer, plug it back into the equation, and make sure it holds true. 3 times 3, 9. 9 plus 4, 13. 13 equal to 13. So that's the big idea in algebra, um, is that it's the introduction of a variable, and usually you're trying to either given a number to place in for the variable and, and simplify that expression or evaluate the expression, or you actually have an equation, and what you need to do with that equation is isolate the variable to figure out what that variable is equal to. Before we get started uh, over some of the operations in algebra and the properties of algebra, let me just review order of operations. Some people use this uh, mnemonic device, PEMDAS. Please Excuse my dear Aunt Sally, however you want to remember it. But what it means is you always do parentheses first, parentheses, then you do exponents, then multiplication, then division, addition, subtraction. So that's the order of operations. And that means this is the first operation you do in any expression or equation. And here's an example right here. Let's say I have four plus the quantity 3 plus 5 to the power of 2 times 2. So I go up here, first thing I have to do are my parentheses. So I go 4 plus, I add what's inside the parentheses together. I got to do all the operations in the parentheses. That's 8 to the power of 2 times 2. So I've done my parentheses, then I do my exponents. So before I add or multiply, I do my exponents here. So I have 4 plus 8 squared, 64, times 2. And then now that I've done that, my next order of operations is multiplication. So I go 64 times 2, 128. So I've done multiplication before addition. Then I have 4 plus 128. So then my final answer is 132. So again, the order of operations, you can remember it as PEMDAS. You do your parentheses first, then your exponents then multiplication, then division, addition, subtraction, from left to right of any one of these. So if there's a lot of addition, you start on the left of the equation and work right. All right, let's move on to the properties of algebra. Um, so there's a commutative property of algebra. A plus B is equal to B plus A. So that just means 3 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3. The associative property of algebra, A plus B inside of a quantity plus C, is equal to the terms outside as long as it's all addition. The distributive property, which is the one you use the most in algebra, is A times the quantity B plus C is the same thing as distributing that A through the quantity. You see this all the time in algebra. So that is A times B plus A times C. The inverse property of addition is any variable plus its negative variable is equal to zero. And that's how, when I had that original equation, I added negative 4 to both sides. I ended up with a 0 on the left side. The multiplicative property um, is just any times I do a times 1 over a, those things will cancel. a times 1 over a, these things will cancel and just give you 1. So those are all important properties to know for algebra. I don't want to go crazy with them, but these three are by far the most. Uh, these two right here are somewhat uh, intuitive. Okay, let's do some sample problems right here. Uh, pause the video, do the problems before I do them, and then watch how I do them. So number one right here is a simplification. That means just combine the same terms. I look through my operations here. I do have 2x times a quantity. I cannot add 2x plus 4 because they are dissimilar terms, so I have to use the distributive property. So the first thing I do is I distribute that 2x through that quantity. So I have that 3x plus 5. 2x times 2x is 4 times x times x. So that's plus 4x squared. And then 2x times 4 is just 8x. Now that I've distributed, the next step is combine similar terms. I have a 3x and an 8x. I could combine that to say I have 11x. Right here, I have a 4x squared. That is dissimilar and cannot be added to that. And then I have that 5. That's as simplified as that problem can get. Now here, problem number 2 is really almost the exact same. 
However, rather than say simplify, it is saying evaluate the expression when x is equal to 3. I could plug 3 in right now, or I could simplify it first and then plug in 3. I think I'm going to do that. So again, I have 3x plus 5 plus 4x squared plus 8x, just like I had up above. And then I have 4x squared plus that 11x plus 5. Now I'm going to take that 3 and plug it in wherever there's an x. I'm going to plug it in right there. 3 squared, let me write it over here. I have 4 times x, and we said x is 3, so 3 squared plus 11 times x, 3 plus 5. Order of operations, I have to do my parentheses first, but they're all combined. Next are my exponents. I'm going to use a square right here. 3 squared is 9. So I have 4 times 9 plus 11 times 3 plus 5. 4 times 9 is 36. 11 times 3 is 33. And then 5. So remember, I do parentheses first, nothing to do. Exponents. When I'm done with exponents, then I go to multiplication, which I did. And then lastly, I go to addition and subtraction, working left to right. So now I have 36 plus 30. 3, 69, 69 plus 5 is 74, and then that's my answer right there. Okay, here's another one. Here's an expression. There is no equal sign. The directions up above that you can't see say evaluate this expression when x is equal to 3. So x is equal to 3. Uh, again, I'm just going to combine similar terms. 8x and 5x squared are not similar, just like the numbers are not similar. But 8x and 3x is like saying 8 apples and 3 apples is 11 apples. Um, and then this is 5x squared still. And then negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. Now that I have kind of my similar terms combined, I take that value of x and I plug it in there to get 3. Remember, I got to do my exponent first. 3 squared 9. 9 times 5, 45. 3 times 11, 33, plus 2. 45 and 33 is 78. 78 and 2 is 80. So evaluate that expression when x is equal to 3. My solution is 80. OK, two more equations, uh, and then we'll wrap it up here. Again, pause the video, do problems before I do them. Um, remember, with an equation, I have an equal sign. I have my variable x. I need to uh, isolate that variable and get it by itself. Uh, I'm going to do the reverse operation, so I have to do subtraction before I do division. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here to get that 3x by itself is subtract 5 from both sides. All right, so I have 3x plus 5 minus 5. Remember, that's the identity of the zero identity. So 3x plus 0 is just 3x. And then 17 minus 5 is 12. So I have 3x is equal to 12. I could either divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. Or I can multiply by the multiplicative inverse, one-third. One-third times three is equal to one. Um, so I multiply this side by one-third. If I do that to the left, I also have to do it to the right. One-third times three is just one. X is by itself. Twelve times a third is equal to four. There's my value of X. Then my last equation right here, before I even start, I just kind of look at it. What do I need to do? I have to use a distributive property here first. So let me distribute that 2 through the quantity. So I have 3x plus 5 plus 2 times 2x, 4x, plus 8 is equal to 34. Combine similar terms, 3x and 4x is 7x. 5 and 8 is 13, is equal to 34. Not sure what happened to the video there, but it ended at 7x plus 13 equals 34. First thing I'm going to do is subtract 13 from both sides. That's going to give me 7x plus 13 minus 13, so 7x by itself. 34 minus 13, 21. Again, I could do whatever I want to the equation as long as I do it to both sides to keep it in balance. It's being multiplied. The reverse multiplication is division, so I could divide by 7 on both sides. Same thing as multiplying by the multiplicative inverse 1 7. That and that cancel give me x. 21 divided by 7 is 3. There's my answer right there. x equals 3.
quick overview on algebra or introduction to algebra. Hopefully that'll answer any questions you have. Um, people spend, you know, years studying algebra, but this should get you started. Okay, thank you for watching. Please comment if you have any questions at all or comment on how well this is helping build foundational skills.